Over the next few months, I'm on a mission to find Britain's best landscape locations for photographers. Now, what makes a good location is kind of subjective, but I'm going to get out there, see what I can find, and I hope you'll come along with me. This time, I've come to the Peak District, an inland national park that covers Derbyshire and Staffordshire in the south, up to Yorkshire in the north. The Peaks has two very distinct personalities owing to its underlying geology. The White Peak is a limestone area with rolling green hills and quaint villages and dry stone walls and limestone caves. The Dark Peak is a more rugged landscape with a millstone grit bedrock. Its peat moorlands, higher terrain and more sparse population make it feel a more wild place. My first location is in the Dark Peak in the west of the National Park, where I'm up early to catch the sunrise. Okay, it's early morning, really early, and we're at our first location. Uh, it's in the southern part of the Peak District, and there's, there's two hills next to each other, Chrome Hill and Park House Hill. They're just outside of Buxton, and there's a road that runs in between them, and I'm parked on that road, and I'm gonna go up one of the hills and take a photo of the other. So I'm going up Chrome Hill, I'm taking a photo of Park House Hill. At the moment, it's, there's not a lot of cloud cover, which is, you know, I'll take that over rain, but it would have been nice to have a few more clouds, but there is a bit of mist, which is good. So hopefully the mist will stay and we'll get a nice kind of, uh, kind of sea of mist in the, in the valleys with the, with the hills poking out of the top. So should be good. Uh, all we gotta do now is get up there, get to a vantage point that we think is, is good and, um, and wait, wait for the sun to come up. And it's three degrees, so it's absolutely freezing, but uh, there's a bit of old walker's wisdom, which is um, be bold, start cold. So start walking cold, and then once you get going and your body warms up, you'll be a bit more comfortable rather than just sweating within 10 minutes. But I'm gonna completely ignore it because I'm freezing. So I've got a few layers on. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I'll be really warm in a minute. I think this is kind of a bit of a favorite shot with, um, with landscape photographers, not like, not as much as kind of the millstones at Stanage Edge kind of thing, but um, the good thing about this location is you don't have to walk very far from the car. It's probably, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. So it's not awful. Look at that view. That's why we do it. The mist is just in the right place at the moment. It's not the hills coming out the top and it's nice and clear on top, but at the bottom it's almost almost completely um, covered. So there's a really nice kind of vignette, beautiful. I think we've got about, let's have a look at the time. What are we on? 7.10. So we've got uh, around about 28 minutes till sunrise. So got to get a bit of a, bit of a step on because we're probably the good light's going to be here in maybe 15 minutes. So. Don't want to miss it. As I climbed, I was able to see right down the valley and it became apparent that the conditions this morning were going to be really impressive. Getting up early paid off. Look at that mist, unbelievable. Like sitting in the valley, bit of a temperature inversion, so that is pretty amazing. So we'll head up to the tree and uh, you can see there's two or three photographers up there already. This is a good morning for it. Sunrise is about 10 minutes away, so, and it's gonna come up just behind the hill straight ahead. So I think, um, yeah, we'll just get a few telephoto shots and then as soon as the sun comes up, get the wide angle on, maybe the 2870, something like that. Pretty fortunate to get this this morning. It's amazing. As is usually the case with good light, it was over almost as soon as it began and the soft, warm hues were quickly lost to the colder light of day. But I was able to grab a good range of shots on both telephoto and wide angle lenses and just before I left, the mist moved up the valley and poured over the ridge, 
a seriously impressive sight. These have got to be some of the, the best early morning conditions I've ever seen for photography. Unbelievable light, the perfect temperature inversion, beautiful sky, the, the, there's no wind, it's lo absolutely lovely. Super, super lucky. For my telephoto shots, I used the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeters, picking out smaller scenes within this amazing landscape. At 400 millimeters, it was possible to isolate distant areas to create almost abstract, unworldly images of the treetops poking above the mist. Next, I put on the Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter and zoomed fully out to 28 millimeters. I used a tree as my mid-ground subject, which was backlit beautifully by the rising sun to exaggerate its autumn colour. I had to shoot two exposures here to deal with the huge range of light intensities in the scene. I then moved down the hill slightly to push the sun back behind my horizon for less extreme lighting, and I zoomed in to 70 millimetres. I wanted a figure in the foreground to give the image a sense of scale and get a stronger focal point, so I asked Chris, the video guy, to run down onto the ridge. Normally, it's best to put a figure against the sky to help them to stand out, but here the mist did the same job for me, so I was able to position Chris at near the bottom of the frame. On the right of the image, I love how the light has suddenly poured down the valley, highlighting the mist beautifully. I have to say a big thanks to photographer David Lloyd, who recommended this location to me in the comments of the previous video. Well that's it for part one, but join me for part two, where I'll be checking out the waterfalls at Padley Gorge and the sweeping vista at Surprise View.